Ever sat through a game and wondered, what the hell is happening to my continuity? So many game series just make a game and stick it in any place they want to in the story, and it can be a little confusing at times. Well, we're gonna help you set things straight with the true plot, the not so true plot, those odds and bits and wobblies that all seem to crop up all the time. Today's game series is Metal Gear, and obviously, there's gonna be spoilers. Now before we go into this and everyone tears into the comments telling us that we didn't cover this bit of the game or this little itty bitty portion of what this guy said, or we didn't explain the reasoning behind these obscure characters or their motives, we're going to be focused on the overall story, and we plan to give you enough information so that you understand the general motives without completely blowing your mind. And trust me, you're already going to be lost, so you don't need all that extra stuff. We're going to be focusing on the main game series here, so it's going to end at Metal Gear Solid 4. The story in Rising is completely on its own plotline, and the Phantom Pain is currently unreleased. So we do have a couple theories on that one, and if you want to know our theories, click this shameless plug annotation now. Also remember, the Metal Gear series has been released completely out of order. With the first game being released in 1987 and the most recent in 2013, they didn't have the entire story written out. That means that certain things that happened have been retconned and changed to allow things to make sense in the overall plot. The information that we've collected is from released games, books, comic books, and wikis. If we get a fact or something incorrect, please do not hesitate to tell us so we can make the proper annotation. Alright, now that we have all that stuff out of the way, let's get started at the very beginning, because we have a very long and very confusing series to go over here. Beginning in the early year of 1918, China, Russia, and the USA formed the Philosophers, a super shady organization who was controlling everything from behind the scenes. Remember these guys? They're going to be coming up throughout our entire story. In 1935, Naked Snake, aka Big Boss, was born. We'll go more into his name change later. 1942, Otacon's grandfather begins work on the Manhattan Project. 1961, President John Kennedy disobeys the philosophers, leading us to... 1963, he is assassinated, supposedly by the order of those philosophers. And this leads us to our first game in the series, timeline chronologically, not in the actual order of release, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, arguably the best game in the series. Fox Agent Naked Snake, father of Solid Snake, soon to be Big Boss, first villain in the entire series, and a game that takes place much farther in the timeline. Oh god, my head's already hurting. I think I got a nosebleed. Anyway, Fox Agent Naked Snake is dropped into the Soviet jungle under orders from Major Zero. Remember this name, he'll be coming up quite a bit in our recaps at the end of every game. To recover a Russian weapons designer and sabotage a new Soviet Shagohad weapon. Snake is stopped by his own mentor, the one who trained him, the boss. You see, the boss has defected to work with Vulgan, the main villain in this title, and has given him a nuclear bomb in the name of the US without the US knowledge. The nuclear devices are detonated by our main villain, and Snake's mission is considered a failure. With the US being outed as the ones who set the bombs off on purpose, they cut a deal to prove their innocence and send Snake in to redeem himself. His mission is to kill his mentor and recover the stolen weapon Shagohad. During this mission, he is assisted by ex-NSA agent Ava and fights against Spetsnaz soldier Ocelot. Remember this guy, he'll also be coming up a lot in our history. He also learns that Vulcan has acquired the Philosopher's Legacy, a $100 billion savings account. Ultimately, Snake destroys the Shagohad, kills Boss and Vulcan. Go figure, he wins, otherwise we wouldn't have a story, right guys? But, in the first of many shocking twists in the Metal Gear series, Snake finds out what is really happening. Strap in, this is where things are gonna get confusing. You see, Ava reveals that she's actually a double agent. She is a US agent who's pretending to defect to Russia, when in actuality she's defecting to China. Her real mission being that she wanted to acquire the Philosopher's Legacy for China. Ocelot turns out to be a triple agent, 
who is actually working for the US government in some capacity. I believe it's with the CIA, but this man changes teams more than I changed my underpants. The boss was actually, in fact, loyal to the US. You see, she was supposed to go and actually defect to the opposing army so that she could learn the location of the philosopher's legacy. At that time, she was then supposed to die by Snake's hand to prove the US's innocence in this situation, and that way she would be forever branded a traitor to the US. In actuality, the Philosophers, our first super shady organization, arranged all of this and did this for the core reason of if the boss became too legendary, they were worried that she would become too influential and that she had to be removed. Little did they know that by doing this, it would start a chain of events that would go so deep it would require multiple games, book backstories, and a video series to explain it. Anyway, back to our story. With half the legacy in the US's hands and the other half seemingly missing, Snake is renamed to Big Boss and leaves a broken and angry man at his country for the things that they had him do. All right, guys, this is the first of our many recaps. At the end of every game, we're going to recap all of the important bits. That way, if you got lost during the game, just pay attention to the recaps and you'll understand all of the important stuff so that we can move forward to the next game. So, the first one's kind of short, let's hit it up right now. The boss was sent in to find the legacy, a very large sum of money, and secure it for the US by defecting to the enemy's army so that they would tell her the location of said legacy. Once she had its location, Naked Snake, aka Big Boss, was sent in to defeat her and take it all back. He did just that. Big Boss secured the legacy for America, but was disheartened and unhappy with the fact that the boss is now forever branded a traitor by the US regardless of how loyal she really was. And with that, we take our first break, folks. Don't forget to remember that recap. We'll be back next week with the next two games in the series and how they relate to the overall Metal Gear series. And if you enjoyed this, leave your comments down below on how we can improve it and more information you'd like to know. We're already working on the next video series explaining the entire overall chronological story to Zelda after we finish Metal Gear. So I hope you guys subscribe and look forward to that. Also, don't forget to go check out the Eligible Monster bonus channel, where we're currently going through all of the Metal Gear games under a Let's Play series and kind of going over all the inner workings and the little bits that we don't have time to explain in this series, but if you're watching the Let's Play, you'll learn every little bit of what happens in Metal Gear and how it links together.